Hi everyone, Terry Bemis with Watersong Creek Creations here. Today I'm going to share a quick video on a popular piece of artwork and gifts for this season using resin and crushed glass on canvas. These canvases are four inch by 12 inch stretched canvas that I got at Michael's. A uh, quick tip, if you buy them in bulk, they're a better price than if you buy them one at a time at the store. And Michael's is the best price I've found them if you're interested in doing these. So uh, I've done these two ways. The one on the left, that dark green one, I put the seashells and the crushed glass down first and then poured the resin over it. I didn't find that that was the better way to do these. Um, I've I like pouring the resin and then putting everything on it after. It gives me more control and works a little better. So all I've done is mix up, I think I mixed up six ounces of resin for these three pieces, so about two ounces each, and I had a little left over. Um, quick torch to pop the bubbles, and then start laying out the pattern. I used knobby starfish for the star at the top on these. I also used some flat white starfish on some and then natural starfish on others. You can basically use what whatever however you want. It's completely up to you and the and the options are great. You have a lot of uh, different ways you can go with that. The base I'm using what I call the unicorn seashells i just i love those for the base but i've also done them where i've used um, little round dark brown seashells you can use little dots of um, the glass beads like you can get at the dollar tree little pieces of wood the options again are varied and then the crushed glass i get at michael's it's the um, ashland vase filler they come in all kinds of colors. For this project, I'm using teal, lavender, and blue. The one on the left, I took clear crushed glass, put it in a Ziploc, and put several drops of alcohol ink on it. Be careful not to overdo. Do a few drops, seal the bag, shuffle it around, and see if it's the color you want and then add more. A little bit of that alcohol ink on the glass goes a long way. Once you do that, pour them out on a few layers thick of paper towels and wait for it to dry completely. If you don't, then that alcohol ink is gonna run when you put the resin on it. So just make sure they're completely dry. But these other three that I'm doing, I bought the colored glass, crushed glass from Ashland. And it's the tempered glass, so it's not shards that are gonna cut you, they're just a little sharp. Um, and what I do is I pour it out in a straight line and then kind of make a T pattern across the bottom and then start filling in. I pour it rather thick and then use a craft stick to flatten it out and create the shape that I want. Once I do that, I go back and pour a little bit more over the base because I want the points of those three seashells as the base to be covered with the crushed glass. And um, then I use a toothpick to go corral in any stray pieces of glass that have floated off or went where I didn't want them to go, usually up around the starfish there'll be some that are up above where I want it to be. And uh, just flatten them out, straighten them. I used to, when I first started making these, I used to use my craft stick on, it, on the side and pull everything in so it was in a perfectly straight, uniform line. And after I did a few of those, I realized that it, it was just too perfect looking and that's not how trees are. Trees have a variety of shape and branches and um, so I, I kind of like this more natural look a lot better. 
So that's what I go with these days. And you can pretty much make it however you want. Some people like the skinny trees. I kind of like the, the wider, fatter trees that take up more of the canvas. You can also take um, old bits of jewelry or tiny ornaments that you might find at the Dollar Tree you, uh, to embellish the tree and make it look like ornaments on the tree. Some people use um, wire in different colors, jewel jeweler's wire, and crisscross it up and down to look like garland on the tree. Um, old brooches taken apart are fun if they're tiny enough to put on. Personally, I just like the look of the crushed glass standing on its own. Um, I, I just think they're too pretty all by themselves to add a lot to it, but um, you know, everybody has what they like and that's what's fun that you can embellish it however you want or not embellish it at all. So I'm just gonna finish this last one and get it just like I want it. Rounding up all the strays that took off on me. These make terrific gifts for absolutely anybody, but they're especially nice as a hostess gift if you're attending a Christmas party. These are a sweet little gift to give and they're not terribly, terribly expensive to make. Once I have everything set like I want it, I mixed up another small batch of resin and you'll see in a minute, I'm just gonna use my craft stick to drizzle resin over the top of the finished art piece. I do that because when I pour this resin, I'm sorry, when I pour this crushed glass, it's gonna be thicker than the layer of resin that it's laying in. So if I didn't drizzle this resin over the top, then all that glass that's not adhered down with the resin is gonna fall off and I'm gonna have a lot of bald spots. I'm also gonna have a mess of crushed glass all over my workstation. So I lightly drizzle over the top just to set all of the glass. And invariably, you're gonna have a few pieces that don't get set, and that's okay. Just be aware of it when you pick your project up after it dries for 24 hours so that you don't have a mess everywhere, you don't have crushed glass on the floor you might step on with your bare feet. So we're just gonna finish drizzling this over and I don't do it too thick because if you do it's gonna run off and then you're gonna have clumps of resin off to the side that won't be uniform with what you've poured on the rest of the canvas. I learned that the hard way so learn from my mistake. Once I finish then I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours there we go, and remove it from the tray that I've got it curing on. I taped the cups to the bottom because this is such a narrow piece that I didn't want it sliding off. I don't normally have that problem when I'm working with bigger canvases or charcuterie boards, but these I found it was easier if I taped the cups to the bottom. So once I get all of these cups removed, I'm gonna start working on getting the tape off the back. Before I started anything with this, I hammered sawtooth hooks onto the back so that I could hang these when they were finished. And it's pretty impossible to hammer a sawtooth hook or any kind of a hook on the back of something that's got a knobby starfish on the front you're gonna because you're gonna break the starfish all to pieces so after I um, got the hook on the piece then I used my painters tape 
to um, put on the back and catch the drips. So I'm just going to use my heat gun to heat up that those resin drips enough to where the scraper tool can remove them. And you'll see I didn't heat those drips up quite enough because I'm really fighting with the piece to get those drips off. Normally, you would lay a piece down to scrape it. It's much easier and you have better control. But once again, with the starfish, that's pretty impossible. And you can see these pieces are different than the pieces that I showed you in the actual making. Um, I had these already done and cured and ready to go. So for the sake of time, I'm just showing you how I finished off these. They did not change color overnight. <laughs> so once you heat it up and use the scraper tool to get those drips off, the paint just peels right away. I didn't have the paint quite close enough to the edge, which is why I had to use the scraper tool. Because if I had it all the way to the edge, I could just use that heat gun to soften the drips and lift the tape and it would be fine. I wanted the drips to come around the edge and onto the bottom of the canvas so I wouldn't have any lifting of the resin from the side. So that's, that's why the extra step. That way I know the resin won't lift. I'll just scrape off these last strips and lift the tape and this piece will be good to go. Now be sure that this resin has dried for at least 24 hours so you don't get fingerprints all over the front of your art piece while you're cleaning up the back. That's miserable to get to that point and then have fingerprints on the front of your piece. So this is the finished project. Let me know what you're working on as Christmas gifts. I'd love to see some of your projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, Merry Christmas to everybody.